Uh, C'est parti. OK. Uh, hello, everybody, to our new seminar. Uh, today, I have the pleasure to, to welcome Thomas Chacon. Uh, Thomas is full professor of mathematical analysis at University of Sevilla since uh, 1993. Is a PhD doctor by the University of Seville and the U University of Paris 6 in France. And he served as postdoctoral researcher as, at the, the Courant Institute of New York. Thomas was director of the very famous Basque Center of our Applied Mathematics from 2013 to 2014, and director of the Institute of Mathematics of the University of Seville from 2015 to 2018. The research activity of Thomas is motivated by the prediction and control of natural and industrial systems. And the research topics, topics are around the numerical analysis of partial differential equations, arising and fluid de de uh, mechanics, uh, and the mathematical and numerical modeling of turbulence and uh, geophysical flows. And the more recently, uh, Thomas worked on numerical analysis for model reduction for industrial applications. Thank you, Thomas, uh, for accepting our invitation. And uh, please, you can start your talk. Okay, thank you very much. Well, it is uh, a pleasure, oh, sorry. Okay, so how to reduce this? It's all right. Okay, so it is it, uh, it is a pleasure to to have the occasion of presenting this research work. Okay, in this seminar, uh, I would like to thank uh, Nabil uh, Jamati and uh, Mesdi Asayes who proposed me to to give it. Okay. So this is the, I mean, the summary, if you want, of uh, research work that uh, uh, started uh, during a visit uh, uh, at the University of Bordeaux, uh, hosted by Mesh Diaz in, I think, 2014. So since we have been working on the, the reduced order approximations of uh, parametric uh, elliptic problems, and uh, as you can see, the work is in collaboration with the uh, Mesh Diaz in particular, Faker Ben Belgasem, who is at the University of Compiègne, my colleagues uh, Juan Casado, Macarena Gomez, and Isabel Sanchez at the University of Seville, also, and also of, uh, Francois Murat at the University of uh, Sorbonne University or Paris 6. Okay. So, uh, uh, I mean, the summary of what I am, what I am going to present is uh, first, I will talk about uh, the approximation of parametric symmetric PDEs, then of non-symmetric parametric PDEs, uh, and finally about the convergence analysis of the discretization in both with respect to the parameter and with respect to the space. So there will be some theoretical problem statement, essentially what we're trying to do some analysis and some numerical tests on each one of those uh, three uh, subjects, general ones, okay? So essentially uh, in an abstract framework, we are trying to are interested in solving this kind of problem, which are elliptic problems, okay? This can be uh, a Laplacian, but with a diffusion that could depend on some parameter, for instance, okay? So we have, a parametric variational problem, which is of elliptic nature, okay, where both the, let's say, the media eh, and the right-hand side could depend on some parameter that has no reasons to be uh, a real number. It could be uh, either uh, several parameters or even we can consider media with uh, random properties, okay? So gamma in general is a very, ge very general parameter. And we consider that with the framework space in which we are looking for the solutions, it is a Hilbert space. Normally, this will be a function space, okay? Kind of a Sobolev space, for instance. 
Okay, so to give a proper formulation to this, in reality, this is a family of problems, but we have to find which is the right way to present it or to, to, to set it in terms of gamma, okay? So the framework space will be L2 eh, in gamma with values in the Hilbert space H, okay, this one, in which we will look the, for the solutions with respect to some measure, okay, mu. Uh, and what we do to, to give the formulation of this problem is to multiply by a function that will belong to this space L2 of gamma with values in H and L2 with respect to the measure mu, okay? So we multiply by this test function and then we integrate in gamma, okay? And so we recover this uh, new form A bar, okay? So this will be a notation that I will use all across the, the talk. So it is important to remember it. It is the integral in gamma of this bilinear form defining the elliptic problem acting on V, W, which are functions that depend on gamma and for each value of, of almost everywhere with respect to the measure mu, they take values in H, okay? So V of gamma belongs to H, W of gamma belongs to H, and we have in here this bilinear form acting on V of gamma, W of gamma. So we integrate it with respect to gamma, and this should be equal to the right-hand side, which is the interline gamma of F times V, okay, integrated in gamma. So the point is that is uh, H, these forms H are uniformly elliptic and uniformly bounded, okay? Uh, with respect to gamma, then this form is indeed an inner product. We, we assume that the forms A are uh, symmetric, okay? So at the end, this A bar form is an inner product in L2 of gamma H, okay? And then by the lux miclaram theorem, this problem had meet a unique solution. So this is, let's say the, how to say that, the mathematical formulation of this family of, prob of problems to let it have a mathematical sense, okay? <laughs> yes. Sorry? Yes? Sorry, excuse me. So the point is that once we have uh, this result, so we know that there is a solution of this problem, we can prove due to the sigma uh, as a measure is sigma finite, okay? We can prove that the original equation that we want to solve, the parametric equation holds almost everywhere with respect to gamma, okay? So we will consider this formulation. So uh, let me review some, let's say preceding methods to, to tackle this problem, okay? So a standard one is the proper orthogonal decomposition, okay? That uh, approximates the parametric solution by a rank one tensorized decomposition. So this is the sum of some functions belonging to the framework Hilbert space H times a function of gamma, which will be in L2 of gamma, uh, big gamma, okay? With respect to the measure mu, okay? So the idea is to find the subspaces of given dimension, in this case, we will consider dimension N, okay? Such that if we solve the problem by the Galerkin method on the space generated by those functions, okay? So we consider a subspace Z of H of dimension N, okay? And then we consider the Galerkin solution or approximation, if you want, of the problem we are dealing with, this is in reality the family of problems we are dealing with. So we approximate its solution by the Galerkin method on Z, okay? So this is looking for a solution, you see that belongs to this space Z, such that the variation on problem holds, but just with test functions belonging to Z, okay? So we then consider for each Z, the solution of the Galerkin projection that we call UZ. So, and we measure the distance between the parametric solution that we are looking for and its Galerkin projection on Z, okay? So we measure this distance in terms of the integral in gamma of the square of the norm in H of the error, okay? And then the problem is to minimize this error uh, with respect to all such space Z of uh, H of dimension N, okay? So this is 
uh, problem of, the, of calculus of, of variation because we are looking for a subspace, okay? So uh, the point, let me repeat it to clarify. So we consider the family, the family of all subspaces of, of H, we call Z of dimension N, okay? So we want to minimize the parametric least squares, okay? Or quadratic, excuse me, the parametric quadrate error between the solution we are looking for and the uh, Galerkin projection, projection of the solution on the space Z, okay? So, and I say, we want to minimize this with respect to the subspace H. So this is a POD approach, okay? So uh, in this, in this uh, uh, setting, the norm is given, okay? So we consider a given norm in, in H to measure this error. So the POD analysis, okay, uh, proves that the, these functions that define the expansion, the WK, are the eigenfunctions of this operator, which is a correlation operator. And here we have the products, the scalar products of the function to which acts are with respect to the function we are approximating times the function and uh, average on gamma, integrating on gamma, okay? So we can prove, one can prove that this operator is self-adjoint, positive and compact on H. And then it has a complete set of eigenfunctions and we can uh, develop the solution as a linear combination of the eigenfunctions. Then these WKs uh, are the eigenfunctions of the POD operator, okay? And we have the convergence of the series. Uh. From the practical point of view, there is a problem, is that to compute the operator, we need to to calculate the products of the function V with respect to the solution. But the point is that we want to compute the solution, okay? So what is usually done is to approximate the integral by some uh, quadrature formula, and we compute some snapshots to approximate the solution at some uh, values U uh, of gamma I, okay? These are the usually called, called snapshots, okay? And the point is that we need some kind of a priori uh, solution of the targeted, the targeted partial differential equations, okay, to solve, uh, to compute the POD expansion, okay? So we have put in here a reference that could be used. It is, this is right uh, by Karl Bacher and Volkwein, which is an approximation, an, an application of the POD decomposition to the solution of parameter dependent elliptic system as is the case, okay? A different approach, or similar in, in some senses, but different in the way in which the modes are computed is the proper generalized decomposition, the PGD1, okay? So we approximate the solution by the same kind of rank one tensorized decomposition, okay? But now what we do is to solve the, the problem. I mean, this is a problem in here that we want to solve, okay? By assuming that our solution is decomposed in this tensorized solution, okay? And the modes are computed by the flashing. So we first compute the first mode. Then uh, once we know the first, we add a second one and we compute the second one. And then we act like that uh, successively. So for instance, the first one, eh, which is phi one times W one, okay? So what we do is just to substitute this eh, into the formulation in here and choose a special test functions in order to have problems with unique solution, okay? So for instance, if we choose test functions of the structure phi, a, phi one of gamma V, okay? This problem, okay, this first problem has a unique solution if we assume that phi one is known, okay? And the solution will be W one. Also, if we test, if we choose test functions in this second problem in which S uh, is a given function of L2. Well, I have forgotten to integrate in gamma here. Right? We have to integrate in gamma. And in the, in the second problem, we choose a text function, which is of the form S of gamma times W1. Then if we assume that we know W1, then the phi one is the solution of this problem. That means a unique solution. So the, pro the question is that those two problems are coupled, okay? 
and it is a global problem for phi one times w. This is a nonlinear problem, okay? And it is usually solved with the power iteration algorithm, okay? So this is uh, the PGD technique. Well, this is the uh, the deflation algorithm I mentioned, okay? Once we know uh, k minus one modes, then S1 is solved in the same way, but now instead of having a second member, which is the original second member, okay, we have the residual associated to the previous computed solution. But the procedure is the same. As I say, we replace F by the residual associated to the previous one, okay? So these are techniques uh, uh, which are standard by now in reduced order modeling and, the, and that uh, work used to work very well, okay? So uh, what, I mean, the, the main motivation of this work has been instead of uh, uh, using here, let's say some norm in H, which is external in some sense to the problem, because this norm has to be given by the user, okay? The, the main purpose is to do the same uh, minimization approach to solve, I mean, to approximate the solution, the parametric solution, but instead of using here the norm in H that one gives, using the norm which is associated to the form A eh, that defines the problem, okay? And then the, the, the problem is essentially the, the same. So we have to find the space of dimension, of given dimension K or smaller that minimizes the distance measured in the intrinsic norm associated to the form that defines the problem, the distance between the solution and the uh, the galeric projection of the problem okay on the space z okay so well this this problem then has been uh, studied in the reference that i mentioned with uh mes diaz aes faker ben belgasen juan casado and francois murat okay and i'm going to explain the main results okay so there is a first uh, nice uh, property which is that uh, this minimization problem is equivalent to a maximization problem of the dualities between uh, the average dualities be between the second member and the Galerkin projection. And the reason is simply due to the, to the orthogonality of the Galerkin projection, because in this case, the norm in L2 of H, okay, of the solution is the sum square norm, no? Is the sum of the square norm. Well, this is a, a theorem of Pythagoras, okay? So this is the distance U minus UZ, squared plus the norm of uz squared, okay? So this problem, which is a, the targeted problem, no? Is minimizing this distance between u minus uz squared as this term is fixed, minimizing this one is equivalent to maximizing this one, okay? So we have to maximize this one, but uz is the solution of the Galeric projection, okay? So a of uz, Z is equal of to F of times Z for any Z in, in the big space Z. So at the end, this term is the average, eh? the average of the dualities F with the Galerkin solution, which is the, the quantity that we are to maximize, okay? So this have, we have these two, let's say, dual formulations. So we have the minim minimization of the error or the maximization of the dualities with the second member, always with the Galeric in projection, okay? So, uh, I mean, to study the relationship with the PGD eh, method, uh, just when K equals one, K equals one mean that we are looking for uh, solutions with, uh, with rank of one, okay? So we are looking simply for uh, subspaces generated by one single element in H, okay? So uh, this is the norm that we are going to minimize. This is a distance between you and the solution. The solution in this case, as I mentioned, uh, is just rank one. So it is the first term of the, the, this development, okay? So we are minimizing the square norm parametric with respect to gamma, okay, of u minus any, uh, let's say tensor solution where phi belongs to L2 of gamma and V belongs to H, okay? So, uh, well, this is, I mean, 
although a bar is quadratic, uh, this functional j is not convex right? due, due to its structure. Okay, anyhow, uh, if we have a minimum, uh, the optimality conditions can be obtained simply implying that the gradient with respect to this to phi and v and at the optimum is zero. And then we obtain those equations which are right, okay, the PGD equations that we have uh, shown or, uh, already for, for, for the first mode, phi tensor w, okay, which are those two. Okay, I mentioned that I forgot to integrate in here with respect to gamma. Okay, so the point of the interesting point of this formulation is that uh, the standard PGD method eh, is characterized as the optimality conditions associated to finding an optimum of the error measured in the uh, intrinsic norm parametric, okay, just for tensorized solutions where rank one, okay. So this is how to say that a new way of considering the PGD uh, expansion, okay. Uh, we can consider the optimality conditions as actually uh, a nonlinear eigen, uh, eigenspace problem, okay? Because, let's say, sorry. Uh, from this equation, you can compute phi, okay? In terms of W, and, and you can re-inject it in, in the equations for W. And then, well, this is a complicated expression, but this is the expression that is obtained. And what is nice is that if the form A doesn't depend on gamma, okay, we recover exactly the POD expression. So we recover that this, I, this first term, uh, first, first mode to approximate the solution is an eigenfunction of the POD operator. So the POD uh, formulation is embedded in this one, okay? but. Whenever the form A indeed depends on the uh, parameter gamma, then we have, uh, uh, let's say, a more general formulation that cannot be reduced to an, eigen an eigenvalue problem. It is an eigenspace problem, but not an eigenvalue problem. Okay. Okay. So the analysis uh, developed in the, in the reference that I have mentioned proves that there is at least a subspace that solves this minimization problem. Okay. That uh, in the 1D case, can be proved to be equivalent to a nonlinear maximization problem, which is this one, because in this case, the function phi uh, can be explicitly uh, found in terms of the solution w, w, and then we have this maximization problem, okay? So the proof uh, is uses the direct method of the calculus of variation, so we consider a min minimization, minimizing, so, sorry, minimizing solution, uh, pardon, solution, minimizing sequence, okay? Well, to this minimum or to this minimum, okay? You can prove that both terms are bounded, okay? And then there is some uh, subsequence converging, weakly converging, but as we have a tensor product, then the product is also weakly converging in the, in the product space. And then you can prove, uh, not with, it's not very much complicated to prove that this weak limits is a solution, okay? Well, uh, so now, how to apply uh, this, uh, the flash algorithm to compute the solution, okay? Because this uh, formulation provides the first mode, how to compute the remaining modes. So we apply the deflation algorithm in the same way as the PGD method. This is, if you want, uh, an extension of the PGD method and with the only difference that the modes are characterized as solutions of variational problems, okay? So now the first one is the solution of the problem that I have just shown, okay? And once we know uh, a certain number of modes, so we have an approximation, which is a sum of K minus one modes to the solution, the next term, okay, is a solution of a similar problem, but when now to you, we, uh, we rest the computed, okay, solutions, and we find the new term minimizing the corresponding averaged quadratic error, okay? So this is a problem which is essentially as the one we have, we have considered in here, okay? But now we are looking for the error associated to the already computed approximation, okay? 
and uh, this problem fills uh, in the same general framework and then also we have a unique solution okay and thanks to the orthogonalities of the residuals one can prove that this sum okay converges strongly in l2 of gamma h with respect to measure to the measure mu to the parametric solution we are looking for of problem p okay so in practice what we do is that for each iteration we solve this minimization problem we sum the modes in this way okay and then we have uh, the convergence of the sum okay uh, now how to solve this problem okay this or this one for the first mode well the tech, the standard technique is what is called the alternate lead squares method okay which is something like uh, we fix one of two of the two and we minimize with respect to the other and then we iterate with that okay so given phi n w and plus one is the solution of the minimization problem that uh, i mean uh, we have to fix the norm because if we multiply by some lambda we obtain the same also a solution so it is needed to to fix the norm okay and so we fix in here phi uh, n plus one and we minimize this function of j with respect to v okay once we have computed the minimum we fix it and, and then we minimize the functional with respect to the second one to the second uh, algorithm uh, second uh, variable phi okay and this is the new phi n plus, plus one okay so as i mentioned this is the alternate least squares uh, method which has been extensively studied in the in the last years to approximate tensorized approximations for instance of linear systems okay and for which there is uh, an extensive theory as i mentioned okay what is nice is that as i mentioned already the function the functional j is not convex eh? uh, due to this tensor product that appears in here. Anyhow, if we fix V and consider just the functional J of phi with phi, uh, V fixed, then it is convex, okay? It is strictly convex. And then there is a unique solution of the minimization with respect to phi. Also, if we fix phi and eh, the functional is strictly convex with respect to V as it is quadratic, and then there is a unique solution. So each one of those two problems has a unique solution, okay? So uh, it is possible in practice eh, to compute phi n plus one. Uh, solving this problem in terms of uh, W of n, uh, which is it is given in this way well there is something nice that i had also to say is that for instance this function phi is defined in terms of the solution u of gamma but what is interesting is that as we are considering the inner product associated to the form a and u of gamma is the solution of the problem we are looking for we know this value we know this pro this value so this value is the duality between f of gamma and w and so we can compute this okay and this is what is really interesting in, the, in this intrinsic method, okay? As we are minimizing uh, with respect to the norm associated to this inner product that defines our elliptic form, uh, elliptic problem. Okay, so well, well, this is rather technical, but at the end, what is nice is that we can interpret the power iteration uh, method, okay? Uh, oh, we, uh, let, excuse me. So. The, the, the optimality conditions associated to the alternate least square method, okay, can be written in this way, uh, where we have replaced this phi function, and then we interpret these optimality conditions uh, as the power iteration method associated uh, to the uh, computation of an eigenspace of this operator. So in here, we fix W, uh, and we compute in here T of W. Okay, so what we can, as I say, interpret, which is the relationship between this method and the standard PGD one, okay? That this method looks for the solution of the minimization problem, okay? And when we apply the alternate least squares method to the uh, partial problems, and then we implement 
the optimality conditions to each one of those two problems, eh, then we recover the PGD and, and, uh, as optimality conditions. And the optimality conditions actually can be also solved by uh, the power iteration method, okay? That appears eh, as a method to compute uh, an eigen space of this functional associated to the, as I said, the optimality conditions, okay? What is nice, it does. If uh, at, for a given approximate, uh, approximated solution, WN, this function phi, which is defining here, is non-zero, then it is also for the next iterate, okay? So we can compute always this uh, solution, okay? Because to compute W of n plus one uh, from W of n, we need to have in here a non-zero uh, function. And this is indeed the case, okay? Okay, so this defined an algorithm, okay? To compute the mode, first mode or nth mode of the expansion. And then uh, we have studied the convergence of the power iterate uh, algorithm, okay? And the point is that if the uh, sequence of the, these functions phi n, okay? Which are these, these functions, the phi n, are uniformly outside uh, a ball of positive radius of L2 gamma, of uh, L2 mu of gamma. And this, this makes sense. I mean, whenever we are looking or computing a mode of the expansion, which is not uh, zero. So the, the coefficient, okay, should not be zero. Then we will probably have it outside the ball. So this, this hypothesis makes sense, okay? So where alpha is the coercivity constant of the form A, okay? So if essentially alpha is large enough with respect to the right-hand side, okay? Then this operator T, which are, for which we are computing a fixed point, okay? Uh, uh, is contracted essentially okay? within a ball around a solution, okay? So we assume that we have the solution and then we have this property. So T of Z uh, divided by its norm. So T is the operator that we are computing to pass from W of N to W of N plus one, okay? So the distance between this iterate and the solution uh, is uh, bounded by some constant times this parameter rho squared, the distance between Z minus W. So now when Whenever this quantity is small enough, okay, and we apply that recursively, we will have a bound, okay, for the successive iterates, okay. So uh, the power iteration algorithm converges with linear rate, which is this one, okay, and we will have that the solution W is isolated because th there is no possibility of having two in uh, some boundary, of course, of W, okay. So what is nice from this est estimate is that as rho is like alpha minus one, then the, uh, the, the the convergence rate of the power iteration method should be like rho squared, then like alpha minus two, okay? And then we uh, have some experiments in which in particular we test that, okay? So we consider these elliptic problems, a problem in which uh, uh, the diffusion depends parametrically on some parameter gamma. So it is constant in, uh, well, the, the domain's omega is a square. Huh? So if X is in between one fourth and one, then the parameter mu is constant. And if X is between zero and one fourth, the parameter is gamma plus some alpha mean. So the, we use the alpha mean to tune the, the coerciveness constant of, of the associated form. So the associated form is obtained by integrating by parts in here. So it is mu of gamma times gradient of, of the test function times the gradient of the unknown mu. And from a practical point of view, we cannot compute exactly compute the integrals in gamma. So we what we do is to approximate them by some quadrature formula. So in particular, we have used the composed midpoint quadrature formula in the uh, theoretical gamma, let's say continuous one, which is this one, 0.0.011, okay? And in this way, 
mu is the discrete measure, measure associated to this quadratura formula. Okay, so the, what is interesting with the theory is that it, it applies to the, let's say, Lebesgue integral, Lebesgue integral in particular, but also to the uh, to the approximation of the integrals by quadratura formulae because we can consider that we're integrating with respect to a discrete measure, okay? So the discrete problem will also satisfy the same, the same theory, okay? So uh, at first, uh, setting the coercivity constant equal to one, we test the convergence rate of the uh, power implicit algorithm to compute the eigenmodes of the PGD expansion, okay? So this is, these are the, I mean, and, and, uh, to compute this uh, is, this rate, so we compute the, the distance in H between two consecutive iterates with respect to the previous ones, okay? So for the first mode, very fast to get uh, a, an almost constant rate, for the second one, in, in, from second to third iteration, we have 22, this rate. And for the third one, we also have 22 from the third to the fourth. So we really recover that the power iteration converges with uh, this linear rate, expected by this convergence theory, okay? Well, these are the nice eigenfunctions. I mean, in general, with the POD and PGD uh, expansions, uh, the eigenfunctions look very nice, normally due to the to certain orthogonality properties between them, okay. So in here we can see that there are the two parts of the domain in which uh, the the viscosity are essentially different, okay. So they are well reflected in the in the eigenfunctions. Well, we also look at the the other result that we have proved, which is the convergence of the truncated PGD series towards the uh, parametric solution of the problem, okay. So this is the convergence history. Here in the horizontal axis, we have the number of modes, M, okay? And in the vertical, we have uh, the errors in, in logarithm scale. So we have an spectral convergence, okay? Well, this is uh, the dots correspond to the uh, L2 of gamma with value in H1 known and the squares to L2 of gamma with uh, values in L2, okay? These are discrete, uh, th these not are also computed with the same uh, quadratura formula, the midpoint quadratura formula with respect to gamma, okay? So at the end, we re recover a spectral convergence, which is very likely due to the regularity, sorry, of mu, because if you look at mu as a function of gamma, it is, uh, I mean, uh, analytic, okay? So as it is so much smooth, we can expect also a very uh, smooth dependent dependence on the approximation and in the, in the practice we recover, as I mentioned, uh, spectral convergence, okay? So, and the third test is to, to test whether really the, the convergence rate of the power implicit algorithm behaves really as alpha to the minus two where alpha is the uniform coercivity constant of the forms, okay? So what we have done is to increase alpha and to double, okay? So it is two, four, eight. So it is multiplied by two at each step. And then if this theoretical dependence is true, the convergence rate should be multiplied by two, okay? Uh, by four, sorry, because it is a square. Huh? And we really recover that. For mother two, I mean, we have to go to values of alpha very high, but we recover 3.9, for instance. And for the mod one, we need to go to alpha as long, as large as 200, but we also recover 3.99. So, so it means that really those estimates of the uh, uh, convergence rate are really optimal, qualitatively optimal with respect to alpha, okay? Okay, so uh, let me go now to the case in which the, parameter, the problem is non-symmetric, okay? So we will consider again, the same parametric problem that we, I have written in here in terms of this form A bar, okay? And then what we do is to transform this problem in uh, another similar to the ones that we have been looking for, but with a symmetric form, okay? So for this, we need to represent the, uh, the associated operator, okay? To this form A bar, 
Okay, so we consider a family of inner products in H that associated to the parameter gamma, okay, that we assume to be uniformly elliptic and coercive, but with respect to gamma in H, okay? And then we define, well, this integral in here defines an inner product uh, on L2 of, uh, uh, of gamma with values in H, okay? This is the integral of the product of the first element times the second one with respect to gamma, the mood gamma. So this is an inner product in this space. So as a bar is fixed uh, for a fixed W, uh, is a linear continuous form also in the same space. Uh, so we can ensure that there is uh, an, uh, an operator A of W that satisfies this equation. Okay, so this is nothing but the representation of an element of the dual of an space by the risk theorem. But in this case, the, the space is L2 of gamma with values in H, okay? And this is the inner product that we use to represent it, okay? So now we consider this form B bar, and which is the form A bar of W, but as a second, as a test function, we consider A of U, okay? So if we apply this definition, we will have that B bar of W of V is the integral in gamma of A of W times A of V, okay? So this is symmetric, okay? And at the end, as A, this A is an isomorphism, okay? So solving this problem, the original one, will be equivalent to solving the problem with B, uh, with B bar, okay? And what, what is the difference between this one and this one? Is that instead of using V as a test function, we use A of V as a test function. That's the difference. It's like having a, a linear system and multiplying uh, left by the transpose of the matrix. We are doing exactly the same thing, okay? What is the interest now? Is that this is in reality an inner product, so it's a bilinear, uh, coercive and uh, bounded form on L2 of mu gamma H, okay? And then this problem has a unique solution, but now the, the nice thing is that B bar is, uh, is symmetric. So we can apply to this symmetrized problem all the theory that we have developed for the symmetric case, okay? At first, we look uh, for optimal subspaces to approximate by a tensor approximation, no, you, uh, instead of looking uh, as minimizing subspace with respect to A, we'll, we look at uh, spaces that minimize the error between U and the Galerkin projection with respect to B bar, which is, as I say, symmetric, okay? And then we know that this problem admits at least a solution. And then we also know that if we consider the deflation approximation that we have already defined, then this approximated, uh, the sequence, strongly converges to the solution we are looking for in L2 of gamma H with respect to the measure mu, okay? So now the point is how to compute this uh, symmetrized approximation, okay? So uh, as we have to represent, okay, uh, the test function by means of this operator, we need to compute a linear system, okay? So to compute A of V, we need to solve a linear problem for each gamma. I mean, almost everywhere, okay? So uh, if we set different product, uh, inner products for different gammas, then we have to solve problems with, to build and to inverse a lot of uh, linear systems. So it is better in principle to choose a fixed one because then we simply factorize the associated matrix and then we use this for any gamma, okay, to compute this operator A, okay? But what is nice is that if we consider a targeted norm uh, with respect to which we want to approximate U by the, the tensorized approximation, there is a choice of the operator that, might, that optimizes the convergence side of the power iterate algorithm, okay? So because we have also to solve uh, the, this eigenvalue problem, I can space problem by the power iteration algorithm. And then you can choose this space, this, uh, sorry, this uh, operator in such a way that the convergence rate of this method it is optimal 
with respect to any other kind of uh, choices and to represent of inner products to represent A, okay? And it is defined as uh, the transpose operator to A, essentially, okay? Uh, but when we look uh, care carefully to what we are doing, this turns out to precondition the problem by the each problem for each gamma by the inverse of the operator we want to solve. It's like trying to solve a u, u equals to, a, to f and uh, precondition this problem multiplying by a minus one by the inverse of the matrix. Okay. So what is curious is that is that that the the operator that provides the best convergence right of the power implicit algorithm is like a precondition by the inverse of the operator we we want to solve. Okay. So, of course, this is in, from a practical point of view, this is uh, really extremely time consuming. And, and then the idea is to look for approximated operators eh, uh, that uh, to this one, eh, okay, that, that performs the optimal uh, convergence rate. Okay. Well, we will call even uh, just call tests, eh, the method associated to this optimal space, we, we call it targeted norm because we want to minimize, or, sorry, to optimize the convergence rate of the power implicit algorithm with respect to a targeted norm, the, which is a given, okay? So as I say, we have to consider simplified techniques that are less time consuming, okay? And then we have considered some kind of hybrid between the PGD method and this uh, method with, uh, with the optimal uh, choice of the, of the representation operator, okay? So these are the PGD equations for the mode and that we want to solve. And here I am writing the, the, the each iteration of the power implicit algorithm, okay? So to compute the, uh, the part W of the solution, this is exactly the PGD iteration, huh? okay? But to compute the phi part of the mode, we replace the test function by a times the test function where a is the optimal operator. Okay, so as I mentioned, this is a hybrid one. Uh, in here, we compute exactly uh, w tilde, which should should be normalized uh, by the PGD uh, algorithm, uh, exactly a PGD one, and to compute the the test the the function phi, then we use these modified test functions. Okay, so this. Uh, this makes uh, uh, needed the computation of A just once per iteration, because if we put A in here, we will have to compute A for each test function, which is extremely costly, okay? But in here, we have to compute A just once for per iteration, okay? Okay, so we have some numerical results, which is, this is a recently uh, obtained uh, result. So that's why we are by now with toy problems, which is a 1D. Uh, elliptic equation, okay? This is a convection diffusion equation, which is uh, corresponds to a non-symmetric operator, okay? In which gamma is the Peclet number, okay? And again, uh, we consider Peclet numbers ranging from 2.5 to 50, okay? And we, I mean, once we lift the boundary conditions, the faint work space is H10, but we also approximate, of course, by finite elements, in uh, H10, the solution, and gamma also is approximated by some discrete gammas, okay, to compute the midpoint rule to integrate, to do the integrals on gamma, okay? So in here, there are uh, represented the uh, convergence histories of the three techniques, okay? So this is the, the one computed with the optimal operator, which is the fastest as expected, okay? This one is with the simplified, the green one, and the blue one is the one with the PGD. So really we improve the velocity convergence with respect to the number of modes. And here you can see the number of modes which are needed to compute uh, a given error with it. In this case has been 10 to the minus six, okay? So we in here display the number of modes that are needed to obtain errors below 10 to the minus six, six okay? So you see that, that for the targeted method, we need 12. For the simplified one, we need 24. And for the PGD, we need 94. So really, in terms of a number of modes, we improve the convergence. Uh, also, when we look at the uh, CPU times, 
Okay, yes, I mean, the new methods are more costly because we need to compute this operator, okay? So you see that the targeted uh, norm method, which is the, the one corresponding to the point uh, uh, red line, okay, with, with uh, dashes, dashed line, okay, is the best one, okay? This is the one that needs less time. In here, this is the number of modes. So we have gone very far computed 1000 modes, okay? The second one is the PGD and the, the one that needs the most time is this STN, okay? The simplified one. And the reason is that uh, each, computing each mode of the PGD expansion is more costly with this uh, technique, okay? So at the end, uh, curiously, is the, the, the one which in principle needed the more time is the fastest one. It is the one computed with exact, uh, the, the exact optimal operator. Okay, so let me finally, uh, well, just uh, one word on what to do if we want to approximate. The problem is that, I mean, in principle, we want to solve a continuous problem in which the PDE is a continuous PDE and the integral on gamma is, is a continuous integral, okay? So in practice, we need to approximate both the Hilbert space and the integral by some quadrature formula, okay? So the point is that if the quadrature formula is of interpolatory type, okay? I mean, with uh, some composed interpolatory formula, then what we are doing is to approximate the minimization of the function of J that I have already mentioned by some approximated one in which the phi is approximated by some finite element approximation, but also the function V is approximated by a finite element approximation with respect to gamma, if gamma is an interval, okay? So in this case, we can prove that indeed we have convergence, okay? So if the, uh, let's say the, the size of the diameter of the uh, quadrature formula tends to zero, and the uh, size of the elements, okay, tends to zero, then we will have strong convergence of the solution corresponding to the discrete problem to the continuous one, okay? So we have tested it for uh, also a 1D problem in which the diffusion depends on gamma exponentially for gamma equal to zero three. And we, well, in this uh, graphic, we present the convergence is history for the modes going to from one to seven, okay? And for this second member that also depends on gamma and which is smooth with respect to gamma, okay? So we can see, well, this is a combined convergence of the product, okay? This one is the convergence of just W when phi is computed very, very precisely, accurately. And this is the history of the convergence for phi when W is computed very, very precisely. So in all three cases, we see that there is a spectral convergence, okay? And the second test is with a second member which depends uh, on gamma also, but not, not in a smooth way because there is a, a square root. We also obtain a convergence, but in this case is more algebraic than spectral, okay? So really the smoothness of F with respect to gamma plays a role, okay? So we have convergence as expected, but which is less fast. What is convenient, what is interesting is that each mode converges independently on the others, which is what is proved by our theory, okay? So we are now working on several uh, directions. I mean, for instance, the optimal modes, okay? Uh, as we have characterized the modes um, at minima of variational problems, so we, we, we want to, to tackle that problem directly instead of solving the optimality conditions, we want to, to do, to perform optimality of uh, methods, okay? But this, those, those should be done on Grassmannian varieties, which are formed by subspaces of given dimension, okay? Also, uh, not only dealing with subspaces of dimension one, but also larger one, also looking for better preconditioning for non-symmetric tests by following the ideas that I have mentioned. Also to see whether, uh, if uh, this lack of uh, regularity of F with respect to gamma can affect rather some modes 
than others, okay? And finally, some applications uh, uh, to a project that we, we have been working for, um, for several years, which is the thermal analysis of buildings, okay? With a team of uh, Arctic architects and the engineers of this University of Sevilla. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you, Tomas, for this uh, very beautiful uh, talk. Uh, is there some questions? No questions? Uh, perhaps uh, one question, uh, Thomas, uh, these methods are developed on, uh, on specific codes or, uh, or uh... Well, there are, I mean, of course, as we are dealing with, uh, how to say that, new methods, we develop our own codes, okay? But uh, there are, uh, at the group of, uh, Gianluigi Rozza at CISA, there is a library, uh, not, not actually with these particular methods, but with the reduce order methods of POD on reduces vape kinds that can be uh, used. You know, they are public. Okay. This is at the CISA school in Trieste by Gianluigi Rozza. Okay. It's exactly what, what, what I mean. Yes. Then the, is, there is, you develop uh, some libraries that can be used with other codes, well, with other finite element codes, uh, eventually. Yeah, that's it. But by now we don't have them. I mean, this is, uh, as I mentioned, Gianluigi Rozza, the one who is uh, who has made them public for for preceding methods. Okay. Okay. And you you develop this method for other kind of equations or? I mean, our main interest is the long, the last application I have mentioned. Which are, I mean, the when you perform the thermal. I mean, the, the idea is that when an architect has to design a building, there are uh, now commercial codes, which are really official codes, to compute the the structure, the resistance, so they can they can design, they can know in advance which will be the resistance of the building. Okay, but uh, computing. Uh, the how to say that the thermal quality of the building it's much more complicated essentially in what concerns the heat exchange between the building and the and the surrounding area okay so now there are a lot of parameters because you can decide i don't know the size of the walls the kind of materials you you set the size of the windows okay so all those parameters form belong to this gamma okay so our uh, approach is uh, to apply this to the thermal analysis of buildings in which there is a part, which is the building itself, in which the heat equations apply, which is actually the problem that we have considered. And, but there are other, other parts in which the air flows, uh, in which in navier stokes equations sh should be solved, okay? So what we are doing now is both coupling both approaches. Okay. This approach for the how to say the, the the solid part and different approaches because I mean it is much more complicated for navier stops. In there we are we are using reduced base techniques. Okay. Okay. And what are the, the applications of the use of Grassmannian varieties? <coughs> I mean the point is that as we have formulated the how to say that the PGD method as a minimization problem, okay should be over here, okay? So SK is the union of us, all, the, all the Grassmannian varieties uh, of the spaces of dimension one, two, three, up to K, okay? So minimizing here is minimizing in this union. And the, the Grassmannian varieties have a geometrical structure, okay? So there are local cards that you can use to parameterize them, okay? And there are, uh, for instance, 
gradient-like methods to be used on varieties, okay? So it seems that it is better to, to follow that approach because you will find possibly better minima than just solving the optimality conditions, which is the standard PGD, okay? So now we have a, a PhD student who is doing that, okay? He's trying to minimize these problems, then computing the PGD modes, but just solving these minima, these minima problems on uh, grass many varieties. Okay. okay. Okay, is there uh, other questions? No? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, yeah. Thomas. Uh, for your talk, and we uh, we hope uh, we we have another talk with you <laughs> next time. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much to all of you. See you. Uh, Merci, Thomas. Thank you. Merci. À bientôt. Au revoir. Au revoir.